Alright. As usual, we will begin on a Google search. Just find Mini Tool Movie Maker. The first one should be the minitool.com site. Just go there to visit the Mini Tool website. From here we will be presented with a summary of the features of their Movie Maker product. And to learn more about this company, we can go to the About link at the bottom. But unfortunately, there's not much about the company here, only some promotion texts, and that they are Microsoft partner, along with their two office addresses from Canada and Hong Kong, and some contact numbers. At the bottom of the page we can also see links to their 12 products. And in this video we will just be focusing on the movie maker. I also tried to google more information about Mini Tool Software Limited, also to search something from Wikipedia, but I cannot find anything about this company's founder, when it founded, and other information. So I also tried asking Copilot, and it gave me more information, like the company's founding year on 2001, and that the company's headquarter is the Canada office. Other information here are the same thing from their website. It still did not specify who is the founder, so I ask again specifically that question, it says that the founder is a guy named Wei Ming. But it says here that he founded the company in 2009, which is a contradiction to 2001 that it mentioned earlier. So I will take all of these information with a grain of salt, as they are inconsistent. Moving back to the minitool.com's main page, let's go back to the top and open the pricing page. Right of the bat, I would say that this pricing is a bit on the expensive side. If you compare it to something like Wondershare Filmora, which is a more matured and advanced video editor, this mini tool movie maker is more expensive. The only better thing here is the free edition, which Filmora does not have. And with the free version, you can already have all the video elements, export up to 4K, and without a watermark, which is a big thing. On top of that, you also can export three videos without limits, and then have two-minute video export afterwards. I think the free version of the Mini Tool Movie Maker is enough for most people. But for the subscription prices, I will definitely go with Filmora, which is cheaper and have way more advanced features than Mini Tool Movie Maker. Although Mini Tools sometimes offer promos like this up to 60% student discount, as of the time of filming this video. Okay. Let's start using this tool now by downloading the installer. It will download a 2 megabyte executable file as its installer. Once done, just open that exe file, then click install now. It will first download the installer files, which took 30 seconds for me, but of course this will depend on your internet connection speed. Then it will do the actual installation, which took 57 seconds for me. Almost a minute. It will open the Mini Tool Movie Maker's pricing page after the installation, to convince you to subscribe. I'll just close that. Let's click the start now to open the Movie Maker app. By the way, it also created a desktop icon without asking me if I want it or not. We have a nice animation here upon opening. And unlike any other video editing tools out there, Mini Tool Movie Maker does not require any registration and any user logins. Alright. We are first presented with options on what video project we want to create. With four usual options for aspect ratio. And we can also open an existing project or a movie template. Let me click the new project here. The user interface of the Mini Tool Movie Maker is organized and user friendly. We have the media stuffs in the left top corner. Preview section in the middle top, and the properties section in the top right. Then below section is for the video timeline. It's a very familiar and comfortable video editing layout. At the top, we have six icons. The first is for your personal media pool. Second is the downloadable audio elements. And there's a lot of choices here. Considering that these all comes for free, is a great thing. We have the music section and the sound effect section here. A really rich free audio library. Next is the text. So we have pre-formatted text elements here that we can use on our video. If the element is already downloaded, you just need to hover your mouse over an item to view a preview of its animation. I don't think there's a way to customize these animations, rotation and 3D effects though. You just use them as they are, and just change the text value, which is good enough for most people, but might be lacking to some who wants to customize further the text elements. Then we have the transitions. There's also a lot of choices here. So whatever transition you fancy, they are probably here. Then the effects. We have AR stickers, distortions, glitch, love, opening and closing, overlay and particles here. Looks awesome as well. Next is filter, which is the usual filters we can apply to videos and pictures. The element section contains pictures, icons, and stickers you can use. And again, there's a lot here. Mini Tool is really generous on their readily usable built-in video elements here, which is really nice. Lastly, we have the motion, which is basically a pre-built keyframe for the videos. This is nice and all, but I would prefer a customizable keyframe from scratch. But that's just me. If you are a beginner in video editing, these motion elements would be easier to use, it's just not fully customizable though. Okay. Let's start editing videos now. 
First, we need to add our videos, audios, and pictures to the project. Let's try to drag and drop the files here. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. It does not allow drag and drop. So we need to click the media pool area, then manually select all the files that you want to add to the project. There we go. Wait. It also does not recognize an animated GIF file. Okay, another limitation that we discover here. Okay, our files have been added. And on the left side, you can further filter the files by clicking the videos, music and pictures section. To start laying out your video, just drag and drop the video or picture to the timeline below. You can set the sequence of your video elements in the timeline as usual. Then we have this pointer here which you can drag and drop to a specific point in your timeline, and the preview will show that point. To play and pause the video preview, you can click the play button in the preview section or press the space bar in your keyboard. To add a music media, you hover the mouse to the media and click the plus icon, or drag and drop it to the bottom track of the timeline. Speaking of music, when you hover the mouse to the video, a volume icon will appear here, which you can click to toggle between mute and unmute. And to further control the video's audio, you can go to the Audio tab properties and set here the fade in and out, and the slider of the volume. Another limitation that I discovered here. When I click the heading of the timeline, the pointer does not go there. You will need to drag the pointer to where you want it to be. Usually clicking the heading of the time moves the pointer to where you click, but it does not happen here. As usual, you can also drag and drop any elements in the timeline and position it wherever you want. You can also crop an element if you want to reduce or expand it. You can also cut an element by clicking the element you want to cut, then position the pointer to where you want to cut it, and click the scissor icon from either the timeline toolbar or from the pointer. Talking about the timeline toolbar, you have different icons here that will appear depending on the selected element in the timeline. For example here, when I select a video element, I have five icons here. The first two icons are the undo and redo functions. The trash can icon deletes the selected element in the timeline. I have already shown what the scissor icon does earlier. The watch icon here sets the speed of the video, which you can make faster with the higher numbers, or slower with the below 1 values. And you can also reverse the video from here. Then the last icon lets you crop the video. Cropping functionality is good and all, but I am missing a customizable zoom and panning here. I hope many tool add that function here in the future as well. Aside from these toolbar icons, you can further manipulate the video elements by going to the properties section in the top right part of the UI. These values will change depending on what element is selected in the timeline. First tab here lets you flip or rotate the video element. Then we have the color tab which lets you manipulate the contrast, saturation, brightness and 3D LUT of the video. This is good enough, but I would prefer to have a complete color manipulation though like what Filmora has, which includes properties for shadows, lights, sharpness, vibrance, and many more. Next is the Speed tab, which just like the watch icon in the Timeline toolbar, lets you manipulate the speed of the video. This setting is limiting though or you are only allowed to select a certain value for speed. It will be a lot more useful if the user can enter a certain value of speed here, up to a 2 decimal point value, so that the use has the full control of what speed the video will be. This is very helpful especially if you are syncing the video with an audio narration. Unfortunately, setting a precise speed value is not possible here. And lastly, we have the audio tab, which I already tackled earlier. As we've explored at the earlier part of the video, you can use all of the built-in, readily available, free video elements here. Like adding a title page for example. Just download the one you like, then add it to the timeline, and then set a proper text for the title. We can also add a text to the time, which is useful for captioning something that is happening in the video. All built-in elements are added in a separate track, as you can see here, all the text element we added are in track 1 now. The transitions are then added to the small squares in between the video elements. Just select a transition you want, then drag and drop to those small squares in the timeline. We can also add other elements here that you want to add, and just position, and place it to where you want it in the video. If you want to create a new track, you can just click the plus icon in the top left corner of the timeline section, or just drag and drop an element in a new track. While we are in the topic of the tracks, I also discovered a very disappointing limitation of this mini tool movie maker. Although it allows multiple tracks for built-in elements, it limits the video, picture, and audio tracks to just one track. I always put my logo here as a small video watermark at the bottom left corner of all my videos. But because Minitool Movie Maker does not allow me to have multiple video and picture layers in the timeline, I am unable to do this here. I also usually do multiple layers of audio elements in my videos for effects, but I cannot do that here as well, since the audio layer is also limited to just one. I'm not sure if I just can't figure out how to create multiple layers for video, pictures and audio here, but I've spent about 30 minutes finding a way, but I can't. 
I am actually impressed by how much this tool resembles Filmora, and I can let go the other shortcomings that I've mentioned, but limiting video, audio and pictures to just one layer in the timeline is a deal breaker for me. Hopefully, the guys from the mini tool can improve this in the future. Moving on, as I've shown in the pricing, you are limited to 3 full rendering, and then just up to a 2 minute video afterwards. When exporting, you will see that note here. Mini Tool was kind enough to provide me a lifetime license for the movie maker, so let me show you how to upgrade. At the right side of the title bar, you will see this golden key icon. Clicking that will take you to a dialog box where you can enter your license key. Just enter the license key in the text box, then click the register button. Then wait for about 3 seconds. There we go. I am now a licensed user. The golden key in the title bar is now gone. And when I click export, the dialog box does not show any limitation notes anymore. You can export your video to the local PC or to other devices. Let's select PC for now. Then you can enter the name of the exported video here and also select a location where you want to export it. The export resolution can be from 720p up to 4K. I'll choose 1080p for this sample. Then the frame rate can be from 24 up to 60 FPS. When you're good with your selections, just click the export button and rendering will begin. This 38 second 1080p video took 45 seconds to export and produced a 33 megabyte video file which are all good. Alright. Mini Tool Movie Maker is a mixed bag for me. On one side, the user interface, controls and features are on par with the more famous and bigger video editing company products. But on the other side, it lacks the little things that makes video editing easier, and that one deal breaker for me of course. On one side, it has a really great free package, with tons of free videos elements that you can use readily. But on the other side, it has a steep price for its paid packages, as compared to the more well-known and advanced video editors like Wondershare Filmora. I do like how many tool Movie Maker has laid out the video editor user interface. It is a familiar layout to most people, it is user-friendly, and it's really easy to navigate through it, even if you are a beginner in video editing. The properties and functionalities within the video editor are also great. Although it lacks some of the features that I am familiar with, it still can be considered a complete package for functionalities. Everything you need for a basic video editing are here, and then some more. However, for someone like me who has been editing videos every weekend for more than 4 years now, there are certain functionalities that you are very used to, that when you use something like this mini tool movie maker, you immediately can feel that this certain feature is missing. This of course, is a subjective matter since I might be using these features a lot, but other people might not care about it. In the nitpicking level of items that Mini Tool Movie Maker don't have, I do miss that I cannot drag and drop files from a Windows Explorer directly to the editor's media pool. I miss that I cannot just click the header of the timeline section to move the pointer there. I miss that I cannot customize further and do a 3D text and also manipulate the color properties further. In a higher level, or more important features that I wish the Mini Tool Movie Maker has, maybe something that they can do in the next few updates, is to allow the use of an animated GIF file in the project. Also allow the user to enter a precise number for the speed value, even if it's just up to two decimal points. And please add a user-controlled zoom, panning, and keyframing. These three items are basic functionalities on most video editor. I was honestly surprised that I cannot do it here. Lastly, you might have guessed it, please allow multiple track layers for videos, pictures, and audios. I am honestly considering on using this mini tool movie maker as my go-to video editor, but this lacking feature has immediately made me change my mind. I mean, even the free video editors like Clipchamp allows multiple layers in the timeline. Mini Tool Movie Maker has a lot of potential to become one of the top video editing software in the market. You already have most of the pieces in place. It just needs more polishing. And if someone from the Mini Tool group is watching this video, I do hope you consider all of my comments and suggestions here to improve this almost great video editing tool. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Noba Air.